Thoughts and welcome to another week in reflection on the upcoming Sunday readings. Uh, today I'd like to spend a little time talking with you about our first reading for this Sunday, a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. It's a passage that many of you likely know well. In fact, it has many phrases that we've heard probably countless times and come up in hymns and songs and you name it, such as, we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the promise of things hoped for, not the promise of things seen. Now, the letter is quite rich and beautiful, and Paul draws from extraordinary number of biblical images uh, from the Old Testament in particular, such as we hear this weekend about Abraham. And I think that's important, and in a moment I will get to that. For now, I want to start off, though, with this to maybe help you understand the reading a little bit more. Faith is often understood as a set of teachings or a dogma that we hold and that we pass on. And while that isn't entirely inaccurate, it actually doesn't fully capture what faith is about. For us as Christians, and very much our Jewish brothers and sisters felt this way, is faith is very much about a relationship, a relationship with God, a relationship that God reaches out to us and we respond. Now, like all relationships, there's always going to be some sense of unknown or uncertainty, or we always have to place some bit of trust in the person with whom we're having a relationship with. And so it is with God. Now, for us as humans, we don't always like uncertainty or ambiguity or vagueness. And so oftentimes, this is why we find relationships can be so challenging because we always wish we knew what our partner or friends are thinking about. And the same is so with God. We often wish we knew what God was up to and what God was doing, or at least I know I am. It's constantly a question in my mind, what are you doing, God? So in our hope to actually get certainty, sometimes we get frustrated. But the reality is, is faith is very much about a trust. Trusting that the person with whom we're entering into relationship with has our good in mind. And the same is so with God. When we enter into relationship with God, we trust that God has our best intentions in mind. And God tells us as much. Although God may do some very bizarre things, as we read often in the scriptures, ultimately we always see that God has our interest in for us. Now let me go back to faith. What that means in, in the life of faith is that we're not actually in search of an accurate description of who God is. We're not actually in search of a definitive answer to all our life's questions. In fact, that's not really what the point is. Now, it's good to talk, it's good to discern about those, but that those questions aren't ultimately the final end. Really, faith is about cultivating a deep and abiding relationship with God. And for those of us who are people of faith, that relationship begins first and foremost with a conversation. Just like any friends with any of our partners, we sit down and we spend time with them. We talk with them. We listen to them. And over time, our relationship deepens and our trust deepens as well. And the same is so with God. So my friends, what St. Paul is inviting us to is to enter into that deep and abiding relationship with God in which we trust God, trust that God ultimately has a plan for us in mind. Now, I mentioned early, earlier that Paul refers to Abraham, and it's a very good uh, image that he uses. Abraham, as some of you know, is our father in faith. Uh, for Jews, Muslims, and Christians, we all consider Abraham the father of faith, the one who exemplifies faith uh, to us. And the reason for this is Abraham trusted God so much that Abraham would do whatever God called him to do. And as you recall in the story, God actually calls Abraham to do something really bizarre and quite frankly, quite questionable. In the sense, he asks Abraham to sacrifice his son. 
Abraham trusts that God has a good thing in store. So Abraham goes about, and as he's about to sacrifice his son, God holds him back. And what we read in the scriptures, it was God's test of Abraham, how much do you love me? Now, let's be honest. It is incredibly bizarre, and there's so many ethical questions about that. But the premise of the story is this, that God was testing. God was trying to see how much was Abraham willing to enter into relationship with God? How much was Abraham willing to trust God? Now, you and I, I mean, hopefully will never be asked by God to, you know, sacrifice somebody. We will be challenged in our life and in our relationship with God. God will sometimes make demands upon us and upon our lives. The question is, will we trust God? Will we trust that God is leading us to something more? But the only way we can really form that trust is if we spend some time in prayer with God, if we spend some time in conversation with God. And really, the best way to do that is to find a place that's comfortable and simply sit and open yourself up to God and say, Lord, speak. I'm listening. Or even to talk with God, to share with God your cares and your concerns. And what you find, if you do that regularly, you will find your relationship deepen as well as your faith deepen. Because you will find that you will come to know God even more deeply. And so your trust will deepen as well. My friends, I invite you to make that step by joining us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for Eucharist. It will be good to be back with you after another week of holiday. I look forward to seeing all of you, and I look forward to spending some time with you discerning and reflecting upon the scriptures. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let God's face shine upon you. Thank you.